Welcome back. We're going to go on and now I'm going to shift to telling you a little bit more about my personal background, my medical training, psychiatric training, early experiences. And I know somebody might say, well, you know, let's get on with what you think. We, can, we don't need to hear all that. And uh, that, you can make that argument. But I, I want to give you that anyway, just because I want to give you as much information as you can so that you can make up your own mind what you think of the things that I'm going to be talking about. Because you're going to hear a different point of view if you start inquiring, which I hope you will. When I went to medical school, I thought I wanted to become a researcher because in college I had become very interested in some of the new biology and biochemistry that was developing. I went to college from 1956 to 1960 at Occidental in Los Angeles and then went to medical school at the University of Chicago. So when I arrived in 1960, I thought I would become a researcher. That was what I had been interested in before, but I would do it from medicine. Uh, and for the first year, everything went along really good. Uh, I was involved in some extra things, some research activity in addition to getting really good grades in, in the academic subjects. But I began to develop in other ways outside my work in the medical school. The University of Chicago was almost a unique situation in that the campus of the medical school was right stuck in the middle of the general University of Chicago campus of undergraduates and graduate students. And as I began to grow and, and become really more educated in a broader way than I was before, despite the fact that I was Phi Beta Kappa, and I'm not going to go into all that, but I just want you to know that school was not a problem for me. I, I began to uh, change my thinking about what I wanted to do from medical school. I didn't want to drop out, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. And in the second year of medical school is when I first began to get in touch with some affinity toward the idea of helping people by talking to them. Psychiatry, which was what I guess would come out of that. You could become a counselor in other ways, but I was already in medical school. So the, the natural outgrowth of that could be to become a psychiatrist, which means you go on and get your MD degree, complete an internship, which all medical doctors do, at least in those days, after medical school, and then go on to train as a psychiatrist, normally three years. Uh, but if you do some other specialty training, it can be longer. So I remember very well what psychiatry was like as a medical student, all, because you rotate through different departments. Every medical student rotates through everything from dermatology to surgery, pediatrics, internal medicine. You get a little smattering of all of them. And you work up different kind of patients, and you present your patients to different, more senior people. And it's very, it was very clear that psychiatry was kind of like not exactly a full-fledged member of the medical community, because everybody understood in some way that we didn't do in psychiatry what they did in the other branches of medicine. Now, of course, as a medical student, I had many things to think about, duties to perform, tests to pass, and so forth. But already, I began to question some of the things that I saw in medical school. For example, I remember very clearly walking down the halls of what was then Billings Hospital. It's no longer the hospital at the University of Chicago, but the building's still there. And there was a room devoted to what we call the drug detail men. These were representatives from the drug companies with all kinds of presents for us. And I gratefully accepted those, some of those presents for a while. A big fat medical textbook, which was quite expensive, a kit with an otoscope and ophthalmoscope for examining the eyes and ears, nose, and throat, and uh, various things like that. But uh, what I began to become 
concerned about in psychiatry was the beginnings of what I began to notice was that psychoanalysis was the predominant theory for doing psychotherapy, uh, but a more medicalized approach where physical things were being done to patients uh, that they didn't want and I was not happy with some of those things. So my exposure to psychiatry in medical school, where I'm not yet training to become a psychiatrist, I'm in the same training as every other medical doctor in training, was either the psychoanalytic model of doing talking therapy, and that was really not that well respected in medical community. Those of us who had expressed an interest in psychiatry were kind of like a little bit less on the ladder of prestige, you might say, amongst medical students. Or you then had things that were happening not so much at the University of Chicago, but like a neighboring mental hospital we went to, the state hospital, where I had my first opportunity to watch someone receive shock treatment and was instinctively knew that that was a very, very foolish thing to be doing. So my exposure to psychiatry at that time, graduating in 1960, was basically what psychiatry was doing was not necessarily what I agreed with, both on the side of the psychoanalytic model of talking therapy, which somehow just didn't strike me as very accurate or very meaningful, or scientific, or the physical treatments that psychiatry was beginning and had been doing and was still doing. So by the time I graduated medical school from the University of Chicago in June of 1964, the next step, which would ultimately be, lead me to become a psychiatrist, which was an internship, the next step for a medical doctor before you have moved on to the specialty training of whatever branch you wanted to go into. And I had already decided I wanted to become a psychiatrist and get the training to become a child psychiatrist as well, which would involve four years of training after internship. My internship was done at the Children's Medical Center in Seattle, Washington. And basically, I was there in the same capacity as those other interns, but they were all be going to become pediatricians. They would be training in pediatrics for three years, and the year in which they were my co the colleagues of the same standing would be their first year of their three-year residency, whereas I was just going to be there for one year, but doing the very same duties. And that I completed that at the end of the year, and uh, th that phase of my training is not necessarily anything that we're going to get into in this, these sessions. Pediatrics, of course, is a whole separate branch. I'm, of course, well respected and based on science, unlike psychiatry, which is our subject. At the end of that year, then, at the end of June in 1965, I was ready to start my training in psychiatry, and I had elected the University of Colorado Medical Center, the Department of Psychiatry, because after interviewing in several places, all of which seemed to have a heavy bent toward the psychoanalytic framework, I elected to go to Colorado because although it still had a strong component of the psychoanalytic model, it appeared to me to be more eclectic, more ready for uh, a trainee interested in becoming a psychotherapist to follow a path which would fit with their own beliefs, style of working. I already had enough experience in medical school psychiatry to see that psychiatry didn't work by the same rules as the rest of medicine. But of course, I couldn't have, didn't have the background to conceptualize it like I can now after so many decades of experience. But I knew that if I was going to get trained in psychiatry, I did not want to be locked into the Freudian model. So that's where I went to train in Denver. 
and that started in 1965. And that's when I began to see on a regular basis more and more examples that my concerns were not just ill-founded. There were things that made it very clear that psychiatry was not going to be able to be shoved into a mold in any kind of responsible way that would make it fit with the rest of medicine. There were foundational theoretical problems, conceptual problems, not just weaknesses of administration, putting it into practice, but the very concepts. And I remember as though it were yesterday that from the beginning of my training, I knew that being a medical doctor was not the foundation of the psychiatry that I could accept. It was a hindrance because I could see that psychiatrists were expected to, you know, quack like a duck, walk like a duck, et cetera, et cetera, that no matter what we did, we were not going to be able to do what medical doctors do. And in the next session, that's what I'm going to go into. We're going to talk about what is medicine and what is psychiatry, both as it's evolved and what it should be evolving into, at least as far as I'm concerned. And you're, you're going to hear me do a lot of talking about specific examples, but the themes that are going to run through it are that we have made a terrible mistake in allowing psychiatry to be shoved into a medical model to the detriment of patients, to the detriment of our society, to the detriment of our pocketbooks, and many, many ways, and we desperately need to re-examine this, and unless the people get involved, it will not change. So come back. Look forward to seeing you again.